For most people, Welbury Hill is a pleasant woodland backdrop to Western Supermare. Its 400 acres of trees, shrubs, footpaths are a haven of peace and tranquility. And where archaeologists try to understand the lost civilization which lived on this hilltop 5,000 years ago. Let's take a journey back in time. But you'll need to use your imagination. A hilltop devoid of trees. This is where our later Stone Age, Bronze Age and Iron Age forebears lived. And the evidence for this? Western Museum here in Burlington Street houses a fine collection of ephemera, all gathered from Whirlbury Hill. Come inside and see what we've got on display. Western Museum here houses a fine collection of arrowheads, bones and ephemera found in and around Whirlbury Hill. The dead may not talk, but they do tell a story of prehistoric living in this area. And why did these ancient forebears occupy that hillside location? Well, principally, they were above the floodplain. The southern slopes could be used for farming. The fish came in abundance from the sea and fowl from the levels. And of course, they were in the most ideal defensive position. Don't think of all prehistoric times as being the times of aggression and warfare. Many decades on Wilbury Hill were times of relative peace and prosperity. But about 300 BC, things changed. It did become aggressive. And many, many people perished on Wilbury Hill. This was a time of the Dubonai tribe. They were a warlike people. Just look at what happened on Whirlbury Hill. The museum here in Western Supermare has many, many artefacts from Whirlbury Hill, but perhaps the most poignant are those which came from the end of the encampment. Here is the leg of some poor person incised by an ax. He didn't survive. This arrow found on Whirlbury Hill had gone into one of the tribesmen and here is part of that tribesman. His teeth have seen better days, but look at the back of the skull. An axe finished him off. This was a bloodthirsty end to Wilbury Hill. Wilbury changed forever when John Piggott, who was Lord of the Manor, decided to turn the barren medieval fields and common land into a romantic wooded hillside following the enclosure awards of 1810 and 1815. A thousand sheep were driven off the hillside, stone walls were built around it, and local school children were brought in to plant thousands of trees. It proved impossible to keep the woods private, and so eventually the squire allowed public access. Once again, the woods became important during the Second World War, only this time the Americans were able to hide all their weapons in the woods and along the toll road. It meant Luftwaffe pilots couldn't see what was going on there. This, of course, was in preparation for D-Day. And one day, the Supreme Allied Commander, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, arrived in Weston. And he stayed overnight in a caravan in the middle of the woods near the water tower. And today, well, the woods are one of the great wonders of Western Supermare. The woods are there to be enjoyed by all and at no cost to anyone. But do take care these chill winter days. 2,000 years ago, 
many, many perished in scenes of terrible violence, and not all of their bones were laid reverently to rest. And now we welcome 